Hi, so this is the accompanying video to the Star Protocols paper on image registration for correlative soft X-ray tomography and SIM images. And here we explain how to correlate the data sets taken at B24 using the EC CLEM software in IC. Have a look at the description box below for links to the Star Protocols paper and other relevant papers, and also you can find timestamps for different parts of the protocol in this video so you can skip to the relevant parts. So before we show you the screen recordings, here's a quick overview of what we ha what happens in the protocol. So after you've taken the Quario S60 and QuarioSim data, you'll first do a series of 2D registrations and this is then used to generate a transformation schema file. This is added onto the SIM image to transform it in XY and then we can do 3D registration to transform it in Z with respect to the tomogram. And these are the image data sets that you'll need. So it's helpful to have these four uh, images in one folder when you do the correlation because it also generates lots of other files. So if you put these in their own separate folder it makes it much easier. So you'll have the 3D x-ray tomogram that's been reconstructed and also a 2D x-ray mosaic image and it helps if it's annotated as well so you can find the exact area that you've imaged in the tomogram. Then there's also the Brightfield Z stack that's taken on the SIM microscope and then finally the Structured Illumination Reconstruction Z stack. If you need to do chromatic shift correction on this, then have a look at the extra section in this video where there's a screen recording of how to do that. And inside the protocol paper, there's also more information if you need to do any stage shift correction as well. That's all done using ECCLEM. So before we do the registration, we just have to pre-process the images. And this is just to make sure that any 3D images are converted to 2D for the 2D registrations. So here we're using Fiji to do some minimum and maximum intensity Z projections. So for the tomogram, we will do a minimum intensity projection. You can either do this or you can extract a slice depending on uh, which which image gives more information and then you can just save that in the relevant folder and again we do that for the sim image as well so in this case we'll do a maximum intensity projection So you can save the image like this and that would work fine. Here I'm just going to change the, the colours in the channels but that's not necessary. You can also do that when you open the image in IC. And finally for the Brightfield Z stack. Now in some cases the this might not work, so you can also extract a slice. So for this Brightfield stack, we actually had to do the extract slice method because it was quite difficult to find features inside the Z projection image. So you can see these two features are in this cell nucleus and much clearer in the particular slice. So we'll just extract that and save that. So 
So now onto the image registration. So we'll first do a series of 2D image registrations and we'll take the 2D images that we've just generated and the first one we'll do is this pair of here, the sim image with the bright field image. Then we'll do the bright field and the x-ray mosaic and finally the x-ray mosaic and the tomogram. Use the rigid transformation option here in ECCLEM if possible and check that the pixel size is correct because sometimes it's not correct and then this interferes with the registration. So first we'll do this with the bright field and the sim image. So open IC and drag the two images into IC. Then we open the ECCLEM software. Before that we can change the colours around to the correct colours if we need to and we can also change the contrast to, for example, here you can see the quantifoil holes more clearly. It's also important to check the pixel size down here. So here we're setting the source as the sim image and the target as the bright field. So the source is the one that's going to move. Then we'll press play and we'll place fiducial markers on any of the images. You can adjust the contrast uh, to see better in both of the images. Here we're looking at this notch inside of the nucleus that's quite easy to spot. And you can just spot any any features in the image which you think could help by the quantiful holes if you can see those. And here in the overlay you can see that the registrations worked well. So you don't need to save any of these images, it automatically generates the transformation schema files which are saved in the same folder as the source image. So we'll need those later. But for now we can check that the registrations worked, if it hasn't we can go back and update the transformation again. Now I'll do this with the bright field and the x-ray mosaic images. So here for the x-ray mosaic you can see the pixel size is wrong. In this case it's 10 nanometers so we'll change that. Because these are 2D images, we only need to worry about the X and Y in this case. Then we'll open ECCLEM, and in this case now the bright field image is the source, and the X-ray mosaic is the target. We can press clear all the landmark points to get rid of any previously placed fiducials. And here if it's quite difficult to spot any similar features, then you can do some course registration first and for example here I'm placing points towards this corner area and then uh, on any nuclei which I can see clearly then once we update the transformation then we'll be able to place the points more accurately So now I'm going to clear all the points I placed and then I would place more accurate points again. You can also lock them and lock one which means that the images can then zoom in together at the same location. So in, it's usually best to try to place fiducial markers distributed throughout the whole image but in this case I found it quite difficult to find any other similar areas so I placed them 
on this one nucleus so if that's not possible then you can do that but try to space them out if you can. And update transformation again and this will rewrite those XML files that were created in the folder already. You can just double check with the merge sequences. So that registration looks okay, so now we'll stop that and we can go on to the next step. So now we'll do the same with the x-ray mosaic and the tomogram images. Again, remember to correct the pixel size if it's wrong. So here we can zoom right in. This is why it's useful to use the annotated X-ray mosaic so you can easily find the exact area where you've taken this particular tomogram. And try to be as accurate as possible here, so I'm just trying to reposition these fiducials in the centre of the lipid droplets. And in this case, since there's lots of lipid droplets in places we can place markers, I'm trying to space them out throughout the image so all parts of the image can get registered properly. That looks good. So now we can move on to the next step. So now we'll use the transformation schema files that have been saved already from these transformations that we've done to create a new transformation, transformation schema file. So you take the ones that have underscore transformation schema on them. There's actually three XML files that are generated as you can see. I'm placing them here into the documents folder so it's easy to find them. And if you go to advanced usage in ECCLEM and go to apply transform compute cascading transformation schema and you add the files in the same order that we've done them. So sim to brightfield, brightfield to mosaic and finally mosaic to tomo. Then add a file name.
and we can check if this has been saved. Yep, these two files are now created. So now we open the original SIM stack, the reconstructed SIM image. We go to Advanced Usage and Apply Transformation Schema. And we find the schema that we've just made and click Play. And you can see now the schema has been transformed to the same dimensions as the X-ray tomogram. And we'll need to save this for the next step. So now we can register the stacks in the Z direction. Here, try to use the rigid option if possible, but you may need to use affine in some cases. As you can see in this case, I had to choose affine, but if possible, do use rigid. Here remember to change the pixel size in Z as well. So in this case I'll be using the mitochondria for the correlation so I can turn off the other green channel. I'll open ECclem and again place the SIM image in the source. Now, this does take some time. Try to go through the stack slowly, just in one direction. So here you can see I'm starting at the top of the sim, which is at the bottom of the tomo in this case. And then I'll go through them just until I can see the first mitochondria. And now we need to place points in different slices of the stacks to register them in 3D. Try to be as accurate as possible where you're placing the points, especially in the tomogram, since it has so many more slices than the sim image. So you don't need to add points in every single slice of the same image, but it is helpful to add points distributed throughout the whole stack, not just clustered in one area.
So here you can see that the sim image finishes here. So I'm trying to add as many slices throughout the stack as possible. This is the last position I can place one. And we'll click on update transformation. If the transformation gets skewed at this point, then you may need to close and reload the sim image and then redo this step a few times. But you can see in this case it's worked. It hasn't gone skewed and then we can merge the sequences again and check how it's worked. So this seems to have worked quite well. You can see most of the mitochondria are lining up very nicely. We can now save this merged image or we can just save the transformed sim image and merge them in another software like Fiji for example. So that's the registration process. Now on to some extras. Firstly, the chromatic shift correction. So for this, we use this software Chromagnon. There's more information in the Star Protocols paper. So on the target file side, you'll add your reconstructed SIM image. And then in this case, we're showing you how to do this with a set of reference files which you can obtain from B24. So you add the corresponding reference file for whichever channels you've imaged in. And then you click play. And you can see it generates a new file with the underscore ALN. And once it's done, you can just double check that the chromatic shifts worked properly. So here you can see it's been corrected nicely and the mitochondria and nucleus are lining up together now. Finally, this is how to use the new correlative V plugin. This is so we can get an overlay of the tomogram on the sim image. So currently, at the time of this video, it works in 2D, so we can use the maximum intensity sim image here. We need to generate an inverted transformation schema, so we'll choose the 3D schema file that we made previously in the registration process and we'll invert that, so we can do that here in the advanced options. and we'll check to see that the new files have been created. So here you can see there's inverted and inverted with matrix transfer at the end. That's the one that we'll need in the next step. So now we'll go onto this bar, drop down bar here and go to the Correlative View plugin, which you can find instructions of how to install that on the ECCLAM website or in the Star Protocols paper. So firstly, we'll choose the maximum intensity tomogram. the minimum intensity tomogram. And in the next pop-up box, we'll choose the new inverted schema that we've just created with the underscore matrix transfer. And here you can see the overlay. And uh, at the moment, you can save this by taking a screenshot, but we are working on updating this, and, or Perrine's working on updating this to work in 3D and as well as to save the images. 
So that's an overview of the, the correlation process for tomogram and sim images at B24. Have a look at the STAR Protocols paper for more detailed instructions. Thank you.